begins within the plant's food factories. Chloroplast, a complex facility in the leaf where photosynthesis takes place. Now, if you're wondering, photosynthesis is a process by which plants capture the sun's energy to produce food from raw materials. But how? Well, well, that sounds like my job to explain. Let's begin the light reaction. Imagine that the electron transport chain is a train track. The trains themselves are the plasocyanin, passengers are the electrons, and stations are the photosystems. So, chlorophyll present in PS2 captures energy from sunlight, exciting electrons, and splitting water molecules. This slowly diffused oxygen finds a partner to form oxygen gas. Meanwhile, the electrons travel to PS1, where they're de-energized, so chlorophyll gets energy from sunlight again. Then, these re-energized electrons travel to a compound, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, where a hydrogen ion arises to make NADPH. Lastly, ATP synthase adds a phosphate to adenosine diphosphate, creating adenosine triphosphate. Now, let me let me introduce you to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle. Here in the stroma, it doesn't require sunlight. An enzyme named Rubisco merges carbon dioxide and granulose bisphosphate. It becomes unstable and breaks down to three phosphoglyceric acids. Remember the results from the light reaction? Well, they would energize these to turn into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Well, to fully start the cycle again, we need 12. So this process needs to happen 6 more times. Alright, now we have 12 G3Ps. The cycle uses 10 to regenerate the RUBPs consumed and uses the remaining 2 to build Glucose. Isn't that... Isn't that amazing? To recall, the light reaction occurs in the chloroplast cytokines, producing oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. Then, the dark reaction in the stroma uses two end products and carbon dioxide to produce glucose. Photosynthesis can teach us not only to look on the bright side, but also to pursue greatness even in the absence of light.